Studio One Pro 7 has just launched and includes several new features, improvements, and bug fixes. So let's take a look at some of the new top features for Studio One Pro 7. Hey everyone, it's Dominic, also known as Tick to the Talk. I'm the creator of the Where Is This From Live Loop video series. But in this video, we're going to look at my top new features for Studio One Pro 7. Some of these I've been waiting for for a while, so I'm really excited. So just a little background, I've been using Studio One since version one, and I switched to it as my daily driver at around version 2.5. I've seen and I've helped it grow over the years, so I'm really excited to see these latest developments geared towards music producers and performers. So let's just go through some of my list of the top seven new features for Studio One. Feature number one, a new clip-based launcher. I've been waiting for this feature for a few years now. Being a live loop artist that uses Studio One as my daily driver for production, I'm glad to finally see a way to perform live looping and clip launching. This is gonna be similar to the type of clip launching that you see in Ableton, as well as in Logic X. The launcher interface is integrated into the regular Studio One interface, fitting right in between the arrangement window and the browser. You also have the option of hiding the arrangement window and showing the launcher exclusively. So just like in other software, the launcher is composed of a grid of clips that can contain audio, MIDI, and pattern parts. You can record into them, or in the case of patterns, you can program into them using a controller like the Atom. Each clip also has options for quantizing the triggering, and each clip can also be edited with all of the same tools and methods previously available, like the editor. In addition to launching clips, there is also the ability to create scenes of clips and also playlists. So think of the scenes in Ableton where you can trigger a bunch of clips all at once. And along with being able to launch scenes of clips, you can also order those scenes in another new feature called Playlists. Playlist is unique to Studio One in that it lets you set the order and duration in which scenes can be triggered automatically. So this will likely be good for helping to arrange compositions or even for the performance of songs. So far, I'm loving the workflow of the clip launcher. It is indeed fun to launch clips and play with the arrangement of a track in real time. So stay tuned to the channel for some live loop videos from me using this new feature. Feature number two, stem separation. Yes, Studio One now uses AI-powered tools to facilitate separating stereo audio files into individual stems. This is all possible using technology from Zplane. Yes, that's the same tech used in other products that are on the market. So I would say that the quality is going to be about on the same level as other products. I've tried it out myself and it sounds really good for most applications. Right now, it's mostly focused on separating stereo audio into four instrument types, vocals, drums, bass, and chords. Studio One will even pack the stems neatly in one of its folder tracks, so you can play the stems in whatever combination you like. It could be vocals or bass and chords, no drums, or just drums, whatever you want. This will likely be a great tool for sample producers or for creating acapellas for remixes. There's just so many different applications for stem separation. Feature number three, Splice integration into the Studio One browser. In previous versions of Studio One, you could access Splice using a helper plugin to hear your purchase loops in context. Now the entire Splice library is accessible from its own Splice tab right in the Studio One browser. With a Splice account, you can browse and audition loops in context without having to juggle windows around or even pre-purchase your loops and access them on a hard drive, which is what I do. There's even an option to drag the music you've already created in your Studio One session right into the Splice browser for it to suggest new loops and content from its library. Now, I know there are times where I need loops or unique sound to fill in as like some extra textural element. So this ability for Splice to suggest sounds and loops that are in the same key and fit the tempo, that's really cool and helpful. Feature number four, global key transposition. Have you ever worked on a production and needed to transpose the entire production to fit an artist, or maybe you just wanted to hear it in another key? Well, the task of tediously retuning or replaying every track to fit a new key is taken out of the equation with the help of global key transposition. At the bottom of Studio One, 
there is now the option to globally transpose the entire song by indicating the amount of transposition. It will work for audio as well as MIDI instrument tracks, and it only works for the tracks where you indicate to follow global transposition in the track inspector. So your drum percussion and any other non-tonal tracks will stay unaffected. I've actually had to use this feature on a song I demoed recently. When I tested it with the singer, I decided it should be in another key and it worked flawlessly. My MIDI keyboard tracks, of course, transposed no problem. And my audio guitar and bass tracks did as well with little artifacting. Feature number five, impact integration into the editor. Now this may not be a big one for those of you that don't use impact. But for me, you can now have the impact sample interface next to the editor. So when I'm programming beats using the pattern or the note editor, I don't have to continuously open or move the impact user interface to edit the sounds. The interface is really customizable, so you can make it as big or as small as you want and still be able to see all of the things that you need. That is a tremendous improvement for me in my workflow. It really helps me speed things along. So I'm really happy that they decided to do this. Another new kind of smaller feature with Impact is now the ability to drag a sample from one of its pads into a sample one instrument. This essentially spreads out the sample across your keyboard so that you can play it melodically. Now this is a step in the right direction. I'd be really happy when we can do this from a simple command in Impact like send to sample one, basically knocking out several tasks at once. I'm just saying. Feature number six, new scale tools for note editing. Studio One now has more in-depth tools for editing note data within specified keys and scales. This is beneficial for those that aren't as savvy with music theory. This makes it easier to create music while coloring within the lines and the note editor there is now a scale panel button that opens up the set of tools. Inside the panel, you will find a list of predefined scales, but you can also define your own user scales and create your own scale presets. So if you know the key and the scale you want to use, you can able to filter notes to scale, and that way you will always end up with the notes that are within the key. This is not really a feature for me, but I do see its usefulness for others. Finally, feature number seven, Deep Flight One, Revamp, and Lead Architect Instruments Inclusive. So Deep Flight One has been revamped with its own user interface. It looks more like the Lead Architect plugin, which is now included as a part of Studio One Pro 7. So what is Deep Flight One? Well, Deep Flight One is a multi timbre sample-based instrument in Studio One. It seems to be useful for pads and ambient textures. Within it, you have the ability to use up to three sound sources and manipulate a mix between each of those sound sources, as well as use multiple methods of modulation and effects to create really dynamic sounds. The legacy version of Deep Flight One was based as a Studio One multi-instrument, basically two presence instruments made into a multi-instrument, but it was a little cumbersome and hard to manipulate and tweak the sounds. This new version makes it a lot easier to approach it from a sound design and tweaker perspective. So that's my top seven new features of Studio One Pro 7, but I'm going to give you a couple more new features that you're probably going to find to be very helpful. Really quick, if you liked the video, please let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit the like button. Also consider subscribing. Also let me know what you'd like to see more of from this channel in the comments as well. So here are some of the other new features that you'll likely find very helpful in Studio One Pro 7. Advanced Tempo Detection. This is an improvement on tempo detection in Studio One using more advanced algorithms. Loop tool for events and patterns, as well as event loop option. This is a new tool for the multi-tool that allows you to loop events and patterns instead of using the duplicate. Event loop option is also a command to loop until the end of a song or until the next event in the track. Ableton Link. Ableton Link lets you sync the timeline between multiple softwares that also support Ableton Link. A new CV instrument. This lets you convert MIDI data into control voltage pulses, letting you integrate your analog synth devices when using it with an interface that has DC coupled outputs. Presence editor and audio batch converter included with your perpetual license. 
So these powerful tools are now available without an add-on cost. Clap plugin support. This is support for the open source plugin format. There are already a few big name developers that are also using this format. Impact improvements. There are a few quality of life improvements to the way you edit and use impact kits. Launcher hardware support for Atom, Atom SQ, and the Launchpad. This gives you the ability to use supported hardware controllers to launch, record, and navigate the Studio One launcher. So that's it for this video. Thanks for sticking through to the end. I hope it was informative for you. There will be more videos on the new features and how they work. So please like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you'll be alerted when the new videos drop. Thanks for watching.